Hi, I'm Ellie from The Dark Imp, helping parents reclaim family time by playing board games together. One of the problems that many families face is that one child, or possibly more than one, really doesn't like losing. And this can be displayed in some fairly messy explosions, anger, tears, uh, table flipping, real tantrums. And um, it can it can colour everyone else's experience of playing the game. And in some cases, it can stop families playing all together. And it can also lead to pe some parents letting the children win all the time, which is not great. I've written a blog about this. I'll put it in the notes below. Do have a look. Now, look, it's really good for children to experience failure. We have we fail at lots of things over and over again in our life. And one of the reasons they're kicking off is because they haven't learned to deal with failure at all. And that that's their reaction to failing. They see it as a personal failure. And we have to teach them that it's OK. And actually, it's one of the best ways to learn failure and how to deal with failure when you're playing a game. Because most of the time you're playing a game, if it's a competitive game, you're going to be losing because only one person is going to win. So you're going to they're going to need to be in situations where they are where they're failing to learn how to deal with it. But that learning can sometimes be really difficult for the child and really difficult for the parents. The other thing that it's important to learn is that, you know, we have to learn how to play without needing to win all the time. And uh, I think we all know adults who haven't ever really learned that, that they can be super competitive even when you're doing something that's just supposed to be a bit of fun. And that isn't great. That never feels great as an adult. It never feels great for me playing with those people um, because, you know, it doesn't matter. I mean, ultimately, it doesn't actually matter who wins. We're playing. And so if we teach our children that when they're children, it's, a, it's something they're going to have with them for the whole of the rest of their life. Now, look, it's not enough to, to say that it's not the winning that matters, but the playing that matters. It's we say that and we probably say that a lot, you know, particularly when we're trying to comfort or calm down a child who's losing it because they've just lost. You know, we'll say to them, it's not the winning that matters. It's the taking part that counts. And that mantra is a really good mantra to have. But we need to show them that, not just tell them that. So how do we do that? Well, First of all, uh, we need to make sure that we are not uh, inadvertently rewarding the winner of a game. If you've got in your house a situation where the winner doesn't have to clear up, for example, or the winner is given a round of applause and, oh, yeah, you're brilliant, you're brilliant. Um, and there's all this praise heaped on the winning then you might inadvertently be creating a culture where it's seen to be the thing that is important to win the game. Now, that sometimes is very subtle shifts and it does take quite a long time. You know, I'm not talking about there are no quick wins here. This is over time. You will notice a change if you do these things. Shift the focus from the end game to the game itself. Look for. Children who are, dis you know, when your children display excellent sportsmanship. So if they are um, saying, oh, that was a good move to their brother or something, say, oh, I'm really, really impressed with you. Uh, that's such a nice thing to say. That makes me feel great. And I'm really proud of you. So notice when they're displaying good sportsmanship. Make that the thing you're looking for. Make good plays during the game. You know, it doesn't matter what happens at the end, but if they've made a great decision during the game or if they've made a difficult decision and it's been you know, a hard choice to make, uh, give them give them uh, praise for that. You can even record notes at the end of the, at the end of the game. You can instead if you might. Some families have a little scorebook of who's won different games and you might want to have a little a little book where you keep a note of brilliant things that players did during the game, whether it's good moves or really good sportsmanship or whether it's a time when they uh, were uh, where something went wrong for them and they kept their self-control. Make a little note of it. Let the children know that you have noticed that you have to catch them doing the right thing really explicitly. You have to let them know. There's, forget let sleeping dogs lie. It's total nonsense. 
when they're doing what you want them to do, let them know that you have seen it. It's super important. When you're choosing what game to play in the first place, choose a game where it's not clear who's winning all the, all the way through the game. So some games, you, they, you have a score, uh, a score track and you can see who's winning or you can see who's got the biggest pile of money in front of them. But not every game is like that. You can get games where it's really, uh, really hard to tell who's winning during the game. So focus on those games and try and put an actual time distance between the end of the game and when you score. So separate the game from the scoring. Leave the game exactly where it is and come back to it half an hour or an hour later and do the scoring. Or you do the scoring on your own and then tell everybody that you'll tell them at tea time. It's not an important thing, the scoring. If you separate the scoring from the game, then you can all focus on the experience is the game. It's going to be easier to focus on that. You might want to avoid games of luck. Games of luck don't allow a player to have any autonomy or agency over what they're doing at all. And you can't praise people's great decisions if they haven't had the chance to make any. It's OK to lose. It's better to lose having made your own decisions than to win not having made any decisions at all. As adults, we need to provide a model of great behaviour for our children. We need to be humble in victory and cheerful in defeat. That's what we want our children to do. Having a bad winner is actually almost as common as having a bad loser. When you have a bad win winner, maybe they're crowing about their success in the game and going over the game and explaining to everyone how they did so well and why they're so clever. And that can be as destructive of ha as having a, a bad loser. And often these two things go hand in hand. If one child is a bad winner, another might turn into a bad loser. So make sure you are really dealing with behaviour that is the, the bad winner behaviour and, 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 and showing that it's not acceptable so that you can deal with the bad loser as well. Try some games that are cooperative. So a cooperative game is a game where you all play together as a team to try and beat the game. And then everybody's winning or everybody's losing and it takes the pressure off an individual. So if your child really struggles with um, with losing, maybe they'll find it easier when no one is winning. A next step would be to play a semi-cooperative game or a game that you play in teams so that there are other people that are in exactly the same boat as that child. So look for games where it's not clear who's winning where uh, you can play cooperatively or semi-cooperatively, deal with bad winners, uh, model outstanding behaviour and focus relentlessly on the play, the game play rather than the end game.